yeah, today we're going to be doing something a little different, something that I, I plan on doing significantly more of in the future, and that is talking about um, game mechanics for the My Hero Academia uh, card game coming up. Um, currently, we don't have cards. At time of recording, cards have not been out. They have not been introduced. So I cannot, will not be showing My Hero cards. But what I will be doing instead is, for any of you My Hero frogs, the, the new kids over on YouTube, when you take extra pickles, so good. When you take and um, do... The exact same ideas that we have for the My Hero game will be transferred over to the Universes card game. If you look at the back of your cards, it says Universes. The Universes card game for all of Standard, which has um, licenses not just My Hero Academia, but uh, Mortal Kombat, Cowboy Bebop, Street Fighter, Yu Yu Hakusho, Soul Calibur, and so much more. And so today, all of the cards, all the examples that I'm going to be showing are going to be um, from the... From Standard, the, the the main deck that I'm going to be looking at is a Spike deck from Cabo Bebop and talking about um, the ideas on, on, on how we do foundation stuff. So, with that said, I think I'm just going to pull this up and I'm going to jump to this scene here. So, I've already got TTS pulled up and I'll just I'll pull this notepad here. Oh, I have to m physically move the notepad around here. Okay, yeah, we'll uh, we'll just do this and make my notepad crazy big. Okay, so the main reason that I wanted to to make this video at all, everybody, is I have seen over the course of me playing this game for the past five years that people are very fickle with their decision making when it comes to um, foundations. I think they're not very good. And me as a teacher in my day job, I feel like there's not enough real information out there on how and why you want to build foundations out the way that you do. With that said, there's a fantastic series over on uh, uh, Toy Soldiers. Um, YouTube channel channel man I did not spell this correct um, I will put I will share a link hey we found it okay um yeah there there is a uh, I'll drop this link in chat there is a uh, a good YouTube uh, page um toy sold yours toy sold yours i call them soldiers whatever um who does talk about a lot of uh, uh really deep ideas when it comes to foundations and like what your hard math numbers look like and so on and so forth and i am not personally not so much an analytical player as i am a uh feelings or a heart player and so as i am giving out all of my examples they're all going to be based on a couple of things and so let me just uh use my notepad and explain how i feel about foundations um foundations make or break your game um if you are playing a normal standard game of universes right a, a classic game of universes whether it be from the my hero format which is what we're going to be kind of targeting here or inside of standard itself you not putting foundations in your staging area means that you're probably going to lose yes you can feel like you get paid off if you get that that poke damage in super early turn one turn two but consistently you will lose if you do not have if you do not have um a, a good enough build turn one turn two which is kind of what we're wanting to talk about what up barry i think you join us man and so as you are um, building out your foundations. We have we have blasted past the deck construction phase, which will be one of the topics that we uh, talk about in in one of these uh, uh, Thursday night breakdowns over on Twitch. Um, we've blasted past how to build a deck, and now we're just looking at our cards, right? And when you have your card of hands, it, it, whether you're going first or going second, um, you have to have a couple of things run through your head. 
Okay, so we're we're gonna talk about mulligans here in just a bit. But what I would like to do is I'd actually like to talk a little bit about um, what foundations you're playing and why. Okay, so the first reason that you uh, when you attempt to play out your hand, um, you have to have to talk think about specifically um, building for the most cards. Um, when I build out my hand, I want to build out in a string that will build the absolute most cards possible. Um, this is the most important thing when it comes to building foundations on turn one, turn two, whether you're going first or you're going second. And even if we had that additional rule from the Rochester CCG events where as turn player, as second player, you get to draw two extra ones, your, your job is to build as many cards out as possible. The second thing you have to think about is what do my cards do um there are pl there are plenty of um cards in the game that genuinely don't do anything and i'm not necessarily saying on the deck building level that these are just underpowered cards i mean in specific matchups right and i'll give some examples to this here um in the when i when i get to the one of the, the other sections later on in the video um, but what do my cards do and then the last thing is blocking next turn this is really important if you are going second not so much if you are going first um, but I do believe it is still important and and this is this is how you should be looking to build out your cards right um how can I get the most cards from my hand onto the board safely, smartly? What do my cards do? Do they push my game state forward? And then lastly, um, blocking for next turn. What do I need to actually not build? Um, what am I allowed to take risks on? Um, if if I'm sitting here and I have a bunch of attacks in my hand, I've, I've got four foundations, two attacks, and my attacks have low blocks, I don't need to have my... my the fourth foundation that I that I'm deciding not to play be a low block it should be a mid or a high in order to find that find that zone coverage so when it comes to um building for the most cards right um we will come up here when it comes to building for the most cards the common numbers are uh three two one uh zero for your difficulties and I will show that um we've got can clear this objects oh, I'm gonna actually I've decided that I am stealing Zach's spike deck and that's what I am using for all of my demonstrations because everybody loves spike all right so we have searching does he have any three diffs he's he's got to have God of Thunder right he actually doesn't have God of Thunder in his deck no three diffs surprise surprise color me surprised um, here's what we do. We take and we grab my Fey deck. And we just go steal some God of Thunders out of here and just slam him in this deck. I'm into it. Now we're just going to toss all three of these in here. It doesn't matter about numbers. I'm not actually playing the game. So, uh, one of... Should mention deck size for my hero is 50 rather than 60. You're correct. You're correct. Um, it is 50 minimum as opposed to um, 60 minimum. So this this does change your math. But whenever you sit here and you look at the cards that you're given, right? If I am given, like, your primo build is something along this line, right? A three diff, followed by a two diff, followed by a one diff, followed by a zero diff. Like this is this is like absolutely stunning because nine times out of ten, all of your attacks are going to be having three checks, right? And so if I draw this into my hand, I want to jam all of these down as much as I can. And as I am building decks correctly, I want to mitigate the risk at all possible. Maybe this is the most important card that I have. It doesn't make any sense to put this guy at the top in order to build incorrectly. This is these are kind of no-brainers, but if they're not said, they're not said, right? Um and so we have we have this idea of this safety build, but not every every chance that we get, we're not going to have these beautiful beautiful hands. On the deck building, thank you TJ, on the deck building page, 
um, on the deck building idea, we have to make sure that we are building, crafting our decks so that we can throw out as many foundations as possible um, that are all relevant, which is just another topic we'll get to at a later date. Not, not what we're here for today. So, um, conversely, we want to constantly have this, uh, this three check, three, or a safety three. Thank you, Naval. Safety three check idea, which is, as I am playing cards, I am trying to assume that I'm going to play, uh, I'm going to check a three at the absolute worst. That is, that is the, that is the risk that I'm trying to do, and then secondly, check a uh, uh, five, and then lastly, oh no, check different. Um, what this means is, is most of the foundations you're going to be playing inside your deck have a five check. Otherwise, they have a four check. Otherwise, they have a six check. If they have a six, who cares? It's great. We've got bonus credit. If we've got a four, unless you are tailoring your deck building in order to play a bunch of fours, it's probably not going to happen, right? So it's better statistically just to say, hey, I'm going to be checking threes. I'm going to be checking fives. Unless, and this is back into deck building, you're playing not safety threes, in which case you are... Um, playing twos and one checks in order to increase the power level of your deck um, card effect wise but the drawback is that your check system is worse and so we're not going to talk about the outliers of, of bad checks but just for safety threes our entire job is when you look at your hand and you do your preview math when of, of how can I how can I play out my hand the best that I can these are the these are the numbers that I'm going to to run at okay and so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna close this out I as spike am going to draw a bunch of hands right and then I'm gonna show you how I would play out my turn so looking here I've played this on a three because it's safe I've played this on a three because it's safe this is the risky one on the four I don't have another one it would make sense for me to, to go two four four because I mean what happens if I check rolling threes right I check a five I check a five I check a five it's great but my turns over make sense Let's uh, let's run it back. Let's hit one more hand. See what we get. Oh, this hand looks great. Okay, so once again, let's do our, our safety net. So on a three, it che oh, checks a four. Spooky. On a three, it checks. On a three, it checks. I have successfully built what matters to me. So here, I have the option of, do I want to risk the five or do I want to risk the one? And this is all dependent on whether I'm going first or going second, right? If my character is ready, I can easily, I'm playing this on a four. Even if I recheck this three, I can still commit it. I've built four, which is the number one thing that we want to get, right? The, I want to build the most cards possible. So nine times out of 10, I'm going to build out this additional card if I'm going second, if this is safe, even if I have to commit my character in order to pass this card, because having four foundations going into the rest of the game is is substantially better than having three going in. If it's turn one and my character is already committed, then I get to sit here and calculate the risk of, is this uh, on a five? Is there a five on top of my deck? I don't know. Let's let's look at what's in my discard pile, right? There's uh, way more factors that we have. I right, check the five. Uh, do I want to risk the next five? Yeah, there's no reason for you not to. I checked a five. Hey, look, my five build feels amazing. Oh my goodness, this feels so good. And it's all based on you being able to do correct math. The veterans to the game, they th this is something that's just been ingrained in them. But once again, like I've said before, you don't know what you don't know. So if nobody explains this to you, even from the, uh, you, you don't know what you don't know. Um, if somebody doesn't explain this to you, then um, you, you might not, run your turn out this way. I actually absolutely love this hand, and I'm gonna keep this for my example hand for the rest of the rest of the night. I love it, it's so good. Okay, let's, uh, let's move on to the next point. What do my cards do? So building out as many cards as you can is fine and dandy, but if your cards don't do anything, all that your cards say is, you can commit them in order to pass your checks, which is fine, 
But it doesn't do the second thing, which is push your game state. I'm going to put this over here. In universes, because of how interactive the game is, all of my cards are constantly trying to interact with your cards. All of your cards are constantly trying to interact with my cards. And I have this back and forth, this ebb and flow of, of me affecting you, you affecting me. We go to the block, we take damage, we repeat. If the cards and the card text on my board is not relevant to you, then it's kind of a wasted slot, right? Let's go back to our to the hand that we have currently. So when I take an eye, and I'll, I'll flip these guys, right? When I take and I have these guys here, I get to take in and put my brain to work and think about which of these five cards is going to affect my opponent the most? We've kind of already locked in that this is just the, the correct call to build out as my first card, so we can ignore that. But I'm sitting here with two, two diffs. This one, being able to negate an attack as long as they have two or more, three or more keywords, excuse me. And this one being able to disrupt their card pool as long as they have momentum. If I'm facing a deck that I know has a ton of keywords in it, they're playing missile launchers, they're playing nutcrackers, they're playing these, these big, strong power moves, this would be a higher priority to build as my second card than a new master. Conversely, if they're playing a combo deck, and I'm not necessarily worried about their keyword count and the, the big damage that is happening, then I would play the new master next. And so this is something that I see all the time of what is the relevant card text that matters as I play the game. Even more so, we've got Greatest Combatant, and Ageless and Wise. Ageless and Wise is a reactionary defensive piece that says, if you try to affect my staging area at all, I'm going to stop you. I'm going to make sure that that this that I, I get to keep my board all by flipping my foundation. Seems really good. Conversely, Greatest Combatant says that you have um, extra damage and extra speed, and it combos with a new master. This card says that uh, it, they get damage if there's a face down card by card pool. Well, now I've got a new master which does that, and so maybe these two cards. I'm I'm pining for this combo to work together, and so I'll prioritize the greatest combatant. Make sense? And so here is some of the thought process that we get to have as we are um, making our first turn deck build. Unfun stuff says. Like, I was going into an Earth deck, I'd hold onto a new master as a block and try to build Thunder Retreated Ageless Greatest Combatant. Me, uh, hold the two little block and the attacks? Yeah, for sure. And so, these are the, these are the choices that you get to make, right? Um, what is my relevant card text? And that's the, that's the second thing that you have to keep in mind. My last point is blocking next turn. This is really important whenever you go second. So as unfun stuff, he te he technically jumped ahead of me, right? Um, the Earth symbol is very, very good at throwing these low blocks. No, 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 don't, don't be sorry, unfun stuff. It's totally fine, it's totally fine. I appreciate you being a part of the conversation with me. That's, that's the point of doing this live on Twitch chat and not just doing a recording. <laughs> um, the, the point of this is if you look at my hand, this is the hand that I've been given. And so following out my priorities of what's the smartest way to build out as many foundations as I possibly can, followed by the most relevant card text, followed by appropriate blocks. If we took and we made this our line, these cards both have the same two low block. If I'm afraid of the low attack, which we're in Unfun Stuff's example, we're afraid of this low block because we're fighting this super sweet earth deck. Um... I could hold this card, and since I'm going second, because I'm assuming they're attacking on turn one, I can safely play this because I could check the three, right? So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and jam out these cards on a three, on a two plus one, so on a three, on a one plus two, so on a three. Ageless on the four, it checks. Apparently, I must have shuffled. I've got these cards, but I'm checking hot. So yeah, I've built all of these. I have now held a high block and a low block in order to cover my block zone coverage. The only thing that can stop me is something along the lines of uh, a mid-block that cannot be partially blocked, like a Vicious Madness in our current standard meta. But this is a fantastic, this feels absolutely, absolutely amazing. I've got relevant card text on keeping my foundations ready, negating an attack. As soon as I get um, a relevant uh, card, this is here, and I get to keep my foundation. Oh, Ropato's up for the entire thing. My bad. 
as I take and I build, my apologies. Um, this is the uh, optimal play, optimal way to play my cards. God of Thunder, Retreated Artica, Greatest Combatant, and then Ageless, Ageless and Wise, because of the fact that my character's ready. We're assuming we're going second, because that's the most to appropriate time to think about blocking. After I've built these down, I now have optimal block zone coverage of a uh, one high block followed by a two low block. The only thing that can squeak in is a mid block that cannot be partialed. And so this is just this is just me taking my brain and turning it on for just one second and think about what is relevant to the situation at the time, right? So here's what I'm going to do now. Here's what I'm going to do now. Um, I'm going to take and I'm going to grip this and rip it. And I'm going to show you the blocking that the, the building that I would do as a turn one player versus double checking. I think I have all standard characters. Oh. I have made every standard character in a pile and I'm going to flip this pile, shuffle it up and then unflip it, and then we'll see what we prioritize to build against these characters, right? So I've got, oh, <laughs> what a terrible pick. All right, we'll just uh, shuffle that again. Hey, okay, so we've got Remy. So we have to understand what Remy does. Remy does a great job of clearing cards from a card pool. Remy wants to draw a bunch of cards. And so as a five-hander, it should be our goal as a seven-hander to outbuild this character. This is the main focus that we have. What a, what a crazy hand that I just drew. Yeah, so let's build up as much as we can. Our thought process is how many can we build? Relevant card text versus the character. And then um, a solid block zones. We're starting the turn, so we start committed. Let's play our God of Thunder on a three. Easy. So now next we need a two diff. The only two diff that makes sense here is Venomous. We could go for one of these ones. That's totally fine. As long as they are relevant text. I think the two diff is totally fine because it says to draw cards. Remy has the L symbol. We want to draw cards. And so, even though Venomous can't touch her character ability, it can touch other pieces in the deck. So, I'll play it on a three. Easy. From here, we now get to prioritize one of these uh, one diffs. Plus two or minus two damage. Plus one or minus one damage. Or keeping my foundation safe. I know inside of the kit that there's not a lot of destruction happening inside of Remy. So, I'm going to prioritize one of these uh, these other two cards. I'm going to choose the Refusion Refusal. Because um, I think that adding the card up into my card pool is good. Play ball committed is good, and maybe I can be a little more aggressive. This is a combo piece where I have to have an additional card to do a thing, and this card is not. It checks. Here's where I now get to make a choice. I can either go for the safety build, which is rule number one, or we have greatest combatant, or uh, Aegis and Wise, which is a, a potential fail. If I check a three here, my turn is over. My personal choice, well, let's play the safety we didn't get punished, and that's okay. But it's better it's better to be able to build out all four of these and then possibly then then just just in my turn with a three build. My last thing here is I then get to figure out which uh which my my final card that I want to attempt. Because of the fact that we have got double Ageless and Wise in hand, my play would be to play out the Ageless and Wise exclusively because, one, if we happen to fail this, if I check a four or a three here and I, it's failed, we uh, have an additional backup if this card is indeed relevant to the matchup. Maybe maybe this Remy has some sort of surprise for us that I don't know about, um, having done my due diligence inside of the meta. Um, conversely... Technically, all three of my block zones are covered if I uh, keep both the Ages and Wise and the Greatest Combatant. If they decide to play uh, a high attack on their first turn, that is their choice, I can half block with the uh, with the Greatest Combatant. That is a choice that I have. If I hold just the low blocks, they could just string me out with high, high attacks, and there's nothing I can do about it. So yeah, we'll play this. Check the five. Easy. And so now I have got a solid five build, and every single bit of it was logical. I put I put a rhyme and a reason behind it, which is truly what, what I think people need to do. That is going to take your game from, from good to great, 100%. Chat, thoughts, any questions? Questions you can ask, points that you can make for the good people who are, who are watching right now. Please do so.
should have held highs. Um, the thing is, uh, Scavenger, is not every A plus. Also, I don't play two checks. Hey, fair enough. <laughs> In this example, yes, Shane, we don't play we don't play uh, two checks. Um, we have to assume Scavenger that not every Remy deck is a high deck, right? Um, I'm sure that there are plenty of plenty of decks that can get away with just running a bunch of lows. And even if it is a high deck, you're right. I did get to hold the greatest combatant for it, right? So I guess you could, if you wanted to, depending on how you personally feel, you could replace either of these for either option. And it both it fills both roles, right? If this is in my hand, I'm still covering all my zones, except for if it's a mid, I don't get it there, right? Scavenger, you are a very good Remy player, and you have put a ton of thought process into it. Um, and you know that you wouldn't play Remy 2 as the starting Remy. <laughs> um, and so for that, the example is kind of washed altogether. Mulligans. Mulligans, I think, are incredibly important in the game. Uh, arguably one of the most important things inside of, uh, honestly, any game that has them, right? Um, it's this do-over button. It's this... Uh, notepad. Yep. Yeah, we're back at the notepad. Mulligans, I think, are incredibly important in every card game that has them, right? Mulligans are this do-over, this one-time safety net of the game understands that it is incredibly luck-based, and so you get to take and turn an unplayable hand into hopefully scavenging a playable one, right? But my question is, is when do you mulligan? And the answer truly is these three things. It's just these three again. Can I build the most cards possible? What do my cards do? Do they push the game state and then cover my block zones for the next turn? It is so incredibly important. There are, there are plenty of times, I guess, uh, sometimes I could put an asterisk here where there are some times that I care about what do my cards do significantly more than, um, significantly more than, uh, being able to build out because if I find a singular do I find a singular uh, 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 foundation that completely turns off my opponent's entire deck right or do I find a singular foundation that um, makes my engine run these are important things to think about as you are thinking about your mulligan right so we will take and I will clear this clear this and I'm gonna just start drawing hands and I'm gonna give you my impressions on these hands. Okay, so let's uh let's talk about it. We've got a ton of easy defense. We are going first. We our difficulty curve is pretty good. We can safety build at least three of these because of uh two two one, and now we've got an extra one that's a little rough, right? We can't see the hand. I clicked the notepad off. Ah, okay. I have to restart. Okay, so um, as I have pulled up um, my hand here, I've drawn a, drawn a fresh hand. My entire goal is to, to take you through what is the what my thinking is on why I would or would not keep a hand, right? So going first, uh, we'll assume game one, um, and we are now fighting Scorpion. Oh, scary, super scary. What's this guy do? Um, if I block stuff, I take a bunch of damage. At when he's at half health, he hits me really hard, and he pluses or minuses my speed. Great. Would I keep this hand? Absolutely. Straight off the bat, I have got two amazing foundations that kind of trump Scorpion, um, whether it be mid or late game. This card's saying that um, the attack gets flash, and so he doesn't get his six damage pump. This attack saying that after he has pumped a ton of resources into doing his cool thing, I get to just discard it from the card pool as soon as I have a have a momentum. 
great. Not to mention, I've got Know the Power of the Abyss, which we're not even talking about actions at this point, in order to try and stave off that plus two speed. This is such a good hand versus Scorpion, and he's got the evil and death symbol, and so this card now becomes hyper-relevant because of because there are a ton of really good negate and destroy cards, and Angels and Wise gets to stop it. I've already found my, my first two points of what do my cards do, and building for uh, safely building, I found them, right? And so... These two cards aren't even on the table as a choice. I don't want these. These are not inside the conversation. These are the cards that I'm totally fine with, with losing if I decide to play this or this as my extra card and with it. And so from there, what do I do? I either take and I value what the cards do, Retreated to Artica or Innocent Breeze, inside of the matchup, or I value the block. So I want to be able to use my, my cool bamboo block bamboo blind slice as a reversal and so i want this two mid block the two mid block covers all my zones and then i can turn around and uh bamboo blind slice on, on the reversal trying to stop scorpion's turn a little bit so i'm gonna play my retreated artica as my last one not to mention it kind of does the same job as these first two in order to stop the damage from happening so let's play it out and so these are all the thought processes that i have going into my head as i go into my first hand is I, I snap, 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 make the, make this uh, the, these connections happen in order to uh, to fight this character. Let's hit it again. We have a very successful hand. All right, who are we fighting now? Oh, we're not going to fight him. Raphael One Dot. I love this. What does Raphael One Dot do? After an attack is blocked, ready three foundations that have not been ready this combat phase. And then commit a foundation, change the zone of this attack, this attack to any other zone. All right, I love that. Let's draw my seven. What do we have here? Okay, so we've got God of Thunder as our three diff. We've got Royal Bodyguard, Wear Light as our two diff. We've got Cicelica Local Lua, which will count assets as uh, foundations for the time being because building them out, if you decide to build them out on turn one, is good. And then um, Purifier as our zero. So we know two things. We 100% are able to build at least these two cards. For sure. For sure, for sure. The question is, is, is this hand relevant enough to fight Raphael? Right? Being able to... Um, being able to ready up my stuff seems very good. Negating his damage seems okay. Turning off a clutch foundation seems good, especially with him being able to ready things up. And then uh, making him pass on their things is fine would i even keep this this is a good build and so if i prioritize building i would keep this hand but honestly this hand doesn't do very much versus Raphael. this is a hand that i could potentially mulligan and and so this is this is where you get to go down that checklist yeah so i guess if i were to keep this hand it would be as such i would go boom 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 i guarantee get my three build here and then I will risk this guy on the uh, on the five, depending on depending on uh, how I see fit. Here's a small side note. Just kidding. That note's not relevant. Yeah. Yeah. I've drawn this card so much. <laughs> I think it is it a, it might be a four of in this deck. If so, crazy. But yeah, that is a that is my basic idea when it comes to um, drawing. And building foundations. It's a. Uh, I think it is incredibly important that you understand as a universes player, not just for standard, but the upcoming My Hero Academia format. Um, what are you doing when it comes to your foundations being built on turn one and turn two? The entire job of foundations. We'll go back here. The entire job of foundations is to support your game plan. Is to push your game plan forward bigger better further beyond and if you're not wanting to utilize the foundations that are inside of your deck why are you playing foundations to begin with just to check fives there's so much more to the game than that um there are plenty of good let's let's take it back for a second there are plenty of good aggressive players that um have these calculated attacks on turn one but i do believe i believe personally that one of the main reasons that people just 
lose games are shut out of games is because they attack on turn one and don't realize the value of the build in order to make even as an aggressive deck as an aggressive player their mid game rock solid because killing people early is very easy if you get lucky but building is what makes you go from that early fast aggressive pop-off to a consistent mid-game kill, even if you're the most aggressive deck in, in, in the game, right? Luck wins games, consistency wins championships. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chad, is there anything that I missed? Is there anything that, that you think is relevant, prevalent to building on turn one, turn two? Besides the fact that these this same three uh, idea is relevant throughout the rest of the turn processes as well. Um, but the um, priority at which they move, I can, I don't have, we'll go back here. The priority at which they move of uh, building the most cards, what do my cards do, blocking next turn, could potentially change depending on where in the game state you are. And honestly, it just takes a lot of grinding and jamming out games to figure out where do I where do I stack up at the current time? Is it more important that I hold successful blocks in my hand, finding this good block zone coverage? Is it more important that, oh, I found this really strong power card. I need to jam it down, even though it's my only high block. It is so potent that it's good. Or I need to get these foundations out of my hand. I don't think he's going to backswing me. How many can I build? Depending on where you are in the game, you might want to um, prioritize these. But when it comes to turn one, turn two, I feel that um, building, what do my cards do, and blocking is the correct line in order to do it. But if you disagree or agree with me, please let me know down in the comments down below. I would absolutely love to, to hear your feedback and hear your thoughts on um, uh, what it is that I am giving today. Um, if you have any suggestions on another how-to or 101 or whatever I'm going to be calling this little series I do weekly, please let me know down in the comments down below as well. Twitch on right now. Come join us, twitch.tv slash Tam Cardwell, and give suggestions out there. Um, I would uh, I love to hear from you. I would love to hear from you. So with that, thank you for watching, and I hope you're well.